I'm RP2 Knight, and this is Crypto the Necrodancer Aria Low Percent uh, as my submission for Frost Fatals 2025. Aria is a challenge character in Crypto the Necrodancer. You're faced with three main restrictions. She is restricted to having only a dagger, she dies in one hit, and she dies on a missed beat. In addition, she'll go through the zones backwards, something which is less relevant for low percent than it is for other runs I've done. She also gets a potion, so she really has two hits. But yeah, this is the character. So let me go here. I'm going to, to show a replay because doing this live is hard. Um, so zone five, the main mechanic is the wire. When you hit an enemy while standing on the wire, you can see electricity and it will arc through all enemies. Um, this doesn't happen here, but um, it will happen. I could tell that that was the exit because the exit is an eight by eight room and I saw that there was enough space for there to be an exit. So here, you can see that the electricity arcs through the orc into the skull. I actually also hit the orc shield once to do damage to the skeleton. Um, and now I'm going to work through here. I need to kill this red dragon to unlock the stairs. You can see the skull in the right hand side. That's where the stairs will be right now. And so now I move to the egg. Um, so the restrictions I'm doing for low percent are I can't get items and I can't activate shrines. I don't care about collecting gold. Um, you can try to collect gold, but you can also try to not collect gold, but that's more tedious than fun in my opinion. So you can also start to see some of the, un the hard parts of this where enemies just have so much health and you don't have anything to up your damage. Um, yeah. so I make it to the exit and I get the first slot, which is Fortissimo. This is a fairly straightforward boss. You just work through a lot of the minions, and you have the skeletons that are forming the crowd for his rap performance. I leave one skeleton here killed. This will trap Fortissimo um, while I get, a, get rid of the devil, and then I bring him out and work through his health. So that's the fight. And now I move on to zone four. In zone four, just to let you know, this thing is a rectangle. You start in the opposite corner of the exit, so I know I start in the upper right corner from the minimap on the lower left side. So I'm going to work to the bottom left corner. I'm going to work horizontally than vertically because there are some enemies, especially mini bosses, that are much better to fight with a lot of vertical space than a lot of horizontal space. Here I use this trap to kill a bunch of enemies and then uh, start working my way through here. There's a lot of enemies here so there's a warlock there when i hit the warlock i'll swap positions and i need to kill this goblin rider before i do that the gimmick with the nightmare is that he leave he makes things dark and now i can go to the exit um, because i don't get to upgrade my shuffle i'm only stuck digging tier one walls so if you see anything that's not like a simple wall I can't dig it, and if I do try to dig it, this will count as a missed beat, and I'll move to take damage. Uh, this is a bat closet, closet full of bats. Bats move randomly, so I need to uh, assume that they're always going to move into me if I move uh, next to one. But once I do that, I work my way through the bat closet and get to the exit room. Um, have to again work through a lot of health. The mini boss here is the ogre. Uh, he, every four beats, will either move towards you or swing his club if you're within uh, three tiles in front of him, like that. This will also do damage to any enemies that are there. So once I have killed the ogre, I can again go to the exit. Um, here I need to move right and down. I promise that sometimes you have to move up instead of down in zone four. I just got three downs. Um, I'm working my way through here. I instinctively move backwards after digging a wall because I don't know what's going to be there, so I need to be safe. Um, this enemy here is a confused mage. If it would move when I am two tiles away from it, instead would confuse me. Okay. And I send the armadillo away and I out of sight, out of mind. And I move my way through, getting to the mini boss. And again, if I try to hit an enemy while I'm on the goo, that will count as a miss beat. And I'll use my potion. So, 
Yep, I'm making my way through. That was a mistake. The bat could have hit me, fortunately. This is Deep Blues, the chess boss fight. So every piece moves like it would in a normal chess piece. Um, so the queens can move in any direction. The knights move like knights. The pawns will move two tiles at first and then one tile from there on. Blue pieces have one health, red pieces have two. If a pawn reaches the end, it promotes to a queen. Fortunately, rooks, bishops, and queens don't get to move infinitely far, so they're not as dangerous, and that's the fight. Here is a zone three. I am pretty sure the exit is to the upper right, but there's no good way there. Um, so I need to work around. Um, yep. And the slowly working through. One of the main gimmicks here are the uh, floor pollution. So there's ice and hot coals. If you step on ice, you start sliding. Um, and you don't get to make inputs. If you do, that counts as a missed beat. If you spend two consecutive beats on the same hot coals, you take damage. So I, if I step on hot coals, I need to immediately step off it. There, the dire bat cooperated by being next to the bomb, the goblin bomber one. Uh, here, I'm now just working my way through a bunch of enemies coming towards me. You can see the ice here. I slide. I could not put an input there. And sliding up that four length of ice is very dangerous because you don't know what's going to be there. So working my way to the exit. It's also just easier to not to make the inputs every beat instead of having to take one or two beats off. So that's why I just uh, try to avoid sliding. There's a mimic here. This you can see this uh, shrine is actually a mimic, so I lure it, activate it, and kill it. I cannot pick up that shovel because that would break low percent. And here I'm luring the minotaur over. There. This way, trying to keep it relatively in control before uh, working my way to the exit. I messed up there. I thought the uh, Blade Master is one tile higher, but alas. Also, Blade Masters carry when you hit them, so you get into this sort of dance, actually, which is the most dance like part of the game. Um, with Blade Masters, in my opinion. So, working my way to the exit, which I'm pretty sure is in the bottom left. So one thing I'm doing is I'm leaving a lot of these black skeletons unkilled because if it was from the sarcophagus, that stops the sarcophagus from spawning. And I make my way to the This is Coral Rift. It's an octopus with eight tentacles. You kill the tentacles and the head becomes vulnerable. There's water all over the fight. And water, you have to spend one beat to clear the water where you don't get to move. I'm trying to keep the amount of water on the floor to be as little as possible. So after hitting a tentacle, I jump in the water to clear it. So four of the tentacles have two health and four of them have one. So you can now see I'm working through the tentacles. And this one, and I use my bomb here because this fight gets pretty slow if you don't. And then here, I hit Coral Rift for the sixth point of damage and move on. If this had been in one of the two previous zones, I could have very quickly killed him, but alas. One of the tricks for zone 2 mapping is that oftentimes the exit is off opposite the shop. So when I saw the shop on the bottom, I knew the exit was towards the top. Working my way to the guitar here, trying to keep him relatively not far. Um, yep, and now I just need to get to the exit safely. There we go. Here I can guess the exit is either to the left or right, and I guess right correctly. Um, I could probably be more aggressive with the Nightmare, but I don't know exactly what's on the right there, so I just wait. Um, and there's a nice interaction where if you step on the stairs, uh, it, while you take damage, you don't actually take the damage. So it's a really useful thing to know. Helpful for exiting there. You can exit in something that's nominally an unsafe frame, but unsafe piece, but you definitely so I'm working my way to the exit, which I'm pretty sure is on the right side. There tends not to be sort of direct paths to the exit, so you just need to you sort of go where you're not easily able to go to. Um, yep. 
And that's what happens when the Minotaur gets sort of these long, open hallways. Um, winds up sort of going too far. And again, I need to let the Minotaur go too far. And slowly work my way through the enemies. The Golem is extremely tanky, but not particularly scary on account of being so slow. I do a little bit of scouting for the Minotaur. Hope that the exit there is get out of zone 2. This is Death Metal, the fastest track in the game. Uh, there's three phases. In the first phase, he gets a shield, so you can't hit the shield. In the second phase, he'll start summoning enemies if you don't hit him fast enough. Uh, this Death Metal has a spawn cap of 5, so even if you try to spawn an enemy now, it wouldn't succeed. I can basically ignore the minions because they're going to move opposite to me. And now we're in the third phase where he starts shooting fireballs. So you just get out of sync with him, and there we go. Now we're in zone 1. I'll be honest, I don't have a good sense of how to map zone 1. In some sense, I'm normally, you know, sitting with a map as someone who plays a lot of Aria. So, I'm just working my way through. Um, and yep. You can sort of see that enemies from previous zones are creeping in. Um, this is part of why sort of zones become more and more chaotic. And here again, I keep the Minotaur in a relatively contained place before working our way through. Going with the, so I get to the exit now. And that's safety. Um, there's a trap door there, and so I just let enemies fall through it. And I need to work my way through this, so... Again, a nice cooperative bat that came to a place where I could hit it. And... Working my way through. So, exit's probably above me, and indeed it is. This is a blue dragon, similar style. Work my way around and go up to the ace. So, there we go. 1-3, the last level. I try to get this monkey into the trapdoor, but he gets blocked by the slime, so... Again, I suspect that the exit sling I don't have immediate access to. And indeed, you can start to see everything get done, and so there we go. The Minotaur took two damage from spike walls, so as he was digging through the spike walls, making them through. This is a good example of hot coals. If I were to hit the ice there, I would take damage, but no. This is the final fight. Don't blink. There's a fairly quick kill as long as I don't get forward riders, which I didn't. So this may look scary. But trust me, everything is on rails. Uh, and I made it to the end. And game over. So this is my run. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you in Frost Palace.